Okay, more stats for geeks. Okay, let's uh, uh, let's catch up a little bit. Now, we have seen we we know what our uh, least square regression line is, and we've defined R, right? So, in the process of uh, determining the slope and the y-intercept of our least squares regression line, we were looking at the sum of the squares, okay? And we saw that uh, the sum of uh, yi minus y hat i squared, uh, this was, look back in the proof of when we were uh, determining what m was. Oh, by the way, I've switched back to using m again for slope. Sorry about that. Uh, so we saw that it's m squared times the sum of uh, x minus x bar squared minus 2m times the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar plus the sum of y minus y bar squared. We did see that, I swear. And we also found that m equals that thing. Okay? Well, if you take this and just multiply both sides by the denominator, what you get is that this product, or this sum of this product here, the sum of x minus x bar times y minus y bar, equals n minus 1 times the variance of x times m. So what I'll do is I'm going to say, well, let's just take this and rename it uh, n minus 1 times the variance of x times m. And while we're at it, can we call this, I know what that is, this is uh, just n minus 1 times the variance of x, right? And, well, shoot, while we're at it, isn't this thing just n minus 1 times the variance of y? Huh. Well, then let's see. That means the sum of my squares as I, go, uh, as I goes from 1 to n of y i minus y hat i. That is, well, I can take a, a n minus 1 times the variance of x, m squared minus 2 times m times another m squared plus, uh oh, hold it. Well, I'll just put it like this. Plus n minus 1 times the variance of y. Okay, you with me? Okay, I'm rewriting this top line using these substitutions. m squared minus 2m squared, I think I know what that is. Okay, so that means this is going to be, let me factor out this n minus 1, n minus 1 times sy squared minus m squared times sx squared. That's what the sum of my squares is using my least squared regression line. Okay? So let's just kind of chew on that for a little bit. Okay, so one thing we need to ask ourselves is um, how much did the least squared regression line help us? Okay? And the way that we've been measuring uh, how good the least squared regression line is is uh, by looking at the sum of squared residuals. We want to make that sum of squared residuals as small as possible. And we've got this formula for the sum of our squared residuals. And if we remember at the beginning, the sum of our squared residuals was uh, the best guess we had for y was y hat, right? So that means our residual would have been y i minus y hat. When you square it, it's that. And when you sum them all up, it's that. 
And uh, a quick look at that, and you can see that another way of writing this is to say it's n minus 1 times the variance of y, right? So that was the original sum of our squared residuals. We got this line which helped our prediction much better, and this is our new sum of squared residuals. And if we compare this to this, we can say, hey look, this is just that. So how much better did it get? This much. This times that. Okay? So it got uh, n minus 1 times m squared times sx squared better. Okay? And what does that mean? Well, let's see. If I compare it to my original sum of squares there, I would say, well, it improved by n minus 1 times m squared times sx squared over n minus 1 times sy squared. And that's just m squared times sx over sy, sorry, sx squared over sy squared. Hey, you know what that is? Remember what m is? m is r times sy over sx, which means that r is m times sx over sy. That makes this thing r squared. This is why when r squared is 1, it gets kind of infinitely better, okay? Our, uh, uh, our least squares goes all the way down to 0. And when r squared is 0, it means it didn't help us at all. That's where r squared comes in handy. That's why it describes how much of the, uh, of the variation in the y data gets explained by the variation in the x data.